this is about Unicode. Can I make this bigger? No, I can't. Um, so, what is Unicode? At its heart, it's simply about mapping a number to a character. So, in plain old ASCII, the number 65 is capital A. ASCII is a subset of Unicode. In the Unicode world, the, the database of these mappings, the number is usually written in hex, like this, with a U and a plus at the beginning. Um, then you'll typically see the character, and then the, the definition or the description of the character, which for some reason is always uppercase. Um, they, they don't use mixed case in their definitions, which I find a little odd, but there you have it. So I, um, as some of you may know, am obsessed with XML. Um, this isn't really true, but you could imagine it based on the things I've been involved with. The Unicode database is available as XML, so all these um, descriptions are there, and you could write a program to search them if you were looking for a particular character. So I did that, um, and you can find it. Um, that's a shortened URL, leap to Unicode, leap to being some random um, web development firm in, uh, in um, Switzerland that I have no connection to. I just like that I could name my short code. Um, or you could Google for Unicode Character Finder and you'll find it on my website. So there's three main areas there. There's um, an area where the character will be displayed, an area where information about the character will be displayed, and then um, a search box so you can look for things. So if we had a character in here, which you can paste it in, you can type it in, um, or you can do a search and select them. When there's a character here, then the details of it, including links to more information, will be over in the properties area. Um, as I say, you can search and you can select things from there. And there's a button here saying chart, which you can use to bring up the characters in the same area as the one that you're looking at. The same, same part of the Unicode database. Um, and you can click on those to get more details about them. Um, and then the final bit is there's a scratch pad thing here so that when you're looking at a character, you can add it into your scratch pad and that's stored in your browser local storage so it'll be there um, when you come back to the site. Um, so you can keep your favourite characters in there. So if I click on that... what it looks like, um, and I probably can make this a bit bigger. So, if I came over here, clicked here, and typed the big A, then you can see character number 41 in hex, 65 in decimal if you were using the HTML um, numeric character entity format. If I type in another letter, then it throws away the first one. So it's only ever giving me details of one letter at a time. Um, I have a scratch pad here which has some characters in it already. Um, so I can look at this in two different modes. So there's just text and I could type or paste stuff in here. Um, I can click on the code point view. And it's telling me that these two glyphs that we could see before, the A with the acute on top and the E with the macron on top, um, are actually composed of two different bits. Um, and you can see the code point number of the acute symbol or the macron. Um, but you can also swap it between composed and decomposed form. And so that character C1 is a single character in Unicode that 
includes both the capital letter A and the acute. Um, and if you, if you wanted to, you could um, decompose things and drag them around and recompose things. And then you'll find that A with a macron on top is literally the first one that you couldn't represent with a single byte. Um, that's, that's just racist. So, um, in putting this together, um, I've, I've found myself um, poking around in these different charts. Um, when you look at a character, you can hit the next button like that, or you can just put your pointer over and scroll through various things or jump straight to one. And you can go over here and scroll through the different code pages or select from this enormous menu of the different sections, some of them based on languages, some of them based on um, things like um, historical um, ancient languages, Just goes on. Some of them based on games, mahjong. Here we go. Um, some of the characters are um, quite special. This one, the C Cyrillic capital letter monocular O. Um, this is one of a family of characters that are all letter O's but decorated in different ways because they're for use in words derived from the base word for I. So we have monocular O's in upper and lower case, which is fun to scroll backwards and forwards. Um, this is a binocular O, which bizarrely has two pupils on one eye um, and also comes in upper and lower case form. Um, but then there's the more um, conventional, what, what you might have thought was binocular, is double monocular, um, upper and lower case, obviously. Um, and then this exceedingly special one, which is the multi-ocular O. And this, this one is a bit of a celebrity. Um, that one, here's a word in a, in a language, a Cyrillic, so Eastern European language. This, this is a two-word phrase, so one word and another word, with that letter in it. That's, um, that two-word phrase means many-eyed seraphim. So kind of like an angel, some sort of celestial being with many eyes. Um, that one word in one manuscript is the only known occurrence of the use of this character. <laughs> but it's in Unicode, um, and you can get the T-shirt. It is, and that depends on the font. So some fonts have even more um, ocular O's in, in, the, in the glyph. Um, what else did I find? So you've probably all seen an asterisk, but have you seen an asterism? I mean, that's pretty exciting. Um, this one somewhat boringly named two asterisks aligned vertically, but, but asterism um, conjures up all sorts of interesting thoughts. But look down here. This is the invisible times symbol, and over here is the invisible plus symbol. <laughs> there is no invisible division or subtraction. 
My best thought is that these characters are useful for cases where you need to show you're working but don't want to give too much away. <laughs> this was a revelation for me. Um, so here is female sign, and here is the male sign. I was mildly surprised they weren't consecutive or adjacent in the code page. And then realized that we're in the middle of a block of celestial symbols. <laughs> so Mercury, working out from there, is followed by Venus, Earth, and Mars. So men, women are from Venus, and men are from Mars. And then can move on to the other planets and whatever Pluto is, it doesn't deserve a fancy symbol, apparently. Um. Oh, now that this one down here was an this is a range where you can get interesting combinations and it's cool that Unicode doesn't offer any judgments, it just offers possibilities. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And then moving on into what I call the circle of life um, area, where um, this is kind of reminiscent of, of cellular activity. Um, and then cell division, this is the marriage symbol. And what naturally follows marriage? Divorce. Divorce. <laughs> um, and what follows that? Um, ooh. Oh, dear. death. <laughs> but even in death, Unicode offers choices. Um, you could be cremated rather than buried in a coffin. Um, oh, don't want to go there. Um, where was I going next? Very much so. <laughs> uh, multiple committees over time. One, one lie you may have heard, though, is that... Um, the Unicode characters include characters for Klingon. It, it was proposed, but they decided it wasn't needed. How do you get a character um, You can a write, you yeah, there, there is a process. So Unicode.org is the consortium's website, and there's instructions there on how to, how to do it. And, My you know, for a while has been working on getting the party Right. They decided not to go with the party parrot. Right. So how much of a pitch will they be left? Well, when, when Unicode first came out, it was envisaged that um, 16 bits would be enough for all the world's languages. Um, turns out it's not. <laughs> so... Um, no, no, they were being very optimistic with all the Asian languages. Um, and it, it, Unicode was very unpopular in Japan, um, and they didn't adopt it for a long time, even though you'd imagine it would, it would suit them very well. Um, and the reason for that is because the committee um, defined all these characters and then said, um, okay, this one looks exactly the same as that one, so we'll just put one in, and that was a Chinese character for something, and that was a kanji character for something completely different, and someone decided, oh, they're the same. Um, so there's a lot of that. Um, and this, this tool doesn't, um, doesn't actually give you access to those characters, the Han and CJK related things. In the Code charts. Um, there is, I think it's called Unihan, is the thing. It's um, a unified alphabet. Um, and I've lost track of exactly where it is, but there's thousands of them, and they all have descriptions, but I've used the subset of the um, Unicode database that excludes those ones. 
um, so that it loads more quickly. It's on my list to make it an option so you can click a, a box to, to load all those as well. But um, it, because they're not in here. Um, your, your app is loading the whole thing into the browser memory. Yes, well. that's right. Um, because they're not in here, then you get this sort of thing where there's a generic um, description or stand in for the description, and um, they just all, all have this exact same thing, and it's just the number is changing. Um, the information's available, it's just it would make loading this much, much slower. Um, and for people who want that, that would be fine, but for the rest of us, it wouldn't. Uh, well, that's the, that, I think, is the very next thing I was going to discuss. Um, so, now, what was I looking for there? Yes. So there's a monogram for Earth. Um, so on this page, you'll see these are unallocated characters. This code point is reserved as unassigned. So there's lots of gaps. Um, and if, if you look at this list here, um, there's huge areas in here with almost nothing in them. Um, and that there's a couple of private use areas. The, they could easily do twice as many symbols as, as they have. Um, you can you can assign your you can use those characters and, and assign them any meaning you like. Yeah. So, for example, one of them is commonly used as the Apple symbol because it is in in on on Apple systems. Their logo is associated with that with the system font. But then you're making your own standard yeah. then, and, you, and you every character is assigned. Um, so here's a whole whole block with not a single one of them assigned. Um, here we've got. Um, Sorry, see you, Tom. Here we've got these mathematical letters. I don't know what it is about mathematicians that means they deserve their own letters. Um, which look the same as our letters. And, and I was wondering if it was because they, they bribed someone to get their own chunk of Unicode. But they obviously didn't pay them enough. <laughs> so, so over time, more character definitions are added to Unicode. And, and one day, maybe um, a meaning will be ascribed to this one. And who knows what it might be. <laughs> I, I like to... Th to think that maybe it'll be the mathematical emoji of a raised middle finger um, <laughs> as, as one possibility. Um, that, that might be there. Um, so if we search for, is it CK? There you go. Instant. Um, over pi even. Um, so, if we were to search for Arabic 5, no, what did I do? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay. So, you get this five-pointed star. That is five, but this isn't. Um, if we change the font to um, random selection times New Roman, say, that's the default font. So if you try and display a character and the font you've selected doesn't include that character, then the system will look into the default font and get the character out of that. So it might look completely different. 
um, to the other ones in, in your text. Um, like, for example, That, that is just tragic. <laughs> In shame, yeah. Yeah, that was terrible. Um, so, yeah, the default font um, defines this. Um, Eight-petaled flower is the glyph for a Arabic five-pointed star. I have no idea why. Um, designers. Um, so, getting near the end. So you can have um, all the hours and all the half hours. That's all anyone would need, right? Uh, now here, um, actually, if I just fire up a different browser, like that, and put it in here. Uh, what's that? So you'll notice that the um, Chrome browser has quite a different um, default font. Um, so the, the, the browser has a default font, and then the system has a default font. Um, so there's levels of fallback going on there. Um, the Chrome one has been updated recently, which is quite good because a lot of these definitions come from America. So obviously you get knives um, and you get guns. Um, but for a long time, there was no glyph. Oh, there isn't, even now. There is no glyph for man dancing. So you can shoot people, but you can't dance. Um, that, that's just not implemented in their default font. Um, you can download fonts, um, and in particular for emojis, um, <laughs> there's this font called Emoji One Color, um, which um, is in, it's in open type format, so .otf, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> which is the next generation of true type. Um, and I, I was unaware, but you, you can include SVG character definitions in an um, open type font. Um, so <coughs> these are all in, in that font, um, and this font is shipped with Mozilla. So if I go into that same um, code page here, um, here's man dancing. Well, he's ginger. Um, let's close that. So, ligatures. Um, there's no children present, are there? No, good. Um, here are some uh, different fonts, and you'll notice there is what we could call a tension between the dot on the I and, and the top of the F. And designers have resolved that in different ways. Um, and, and so they've come up with this thing called a ligature, which is a combination of multiple characters. So like the F and the I combined together um, into one character. And so you could um, search in here for ligatures and there are remarkably few of them. Um, they're there but, but not masses um, because it's, it's an idea that doesn't really scale. Um, how do you know in advance which letters people are going to want to put together and, and, and um, whether they'd prefer them to be made into one character? Uh, 
All right. Oh, cool. Yep. Right. Which is on the subject of what I was about to say. That that no, no, that's that's cool. Um, fonts have now developed such that the font can tell the system if these three characters are in a row, or or eight characters, or whatever, then replace them with this ligature, um, which gives us this handy um, font here. Bullshit sands, where certain combinations of letters um, get replaced with an on the fly ligature. So that could be very handy. Um, these are not ligatures, but they're the same sort of concept. Put two characters next to each other, and then the font can take over and do something useful with them. So, here, these um, six, diff five different um, characters, the Fitzpatrick modifiers, are skin tones for emoji. So, you can take an emoji character and stick a um, different skin tone character next to it, and the font Define, uh, displays it as, as one modified glyph. Um, if we took that and put it in a tragic inferior browser. Oh, oh not that one. That one. Um, and I select one of these and one of these, then it doesn't do the magic in their default font, which is sad. Um, and on the same sort of uh, thing, there's this regional indicator thing where if you put two letters next to each other, then you get two letters next to each other. But if they happen to be a country code, <laughs> you get the flag. No idea what caused that. Uh, if you pick two different once you get a completely, oh no, is that the same thing? I can't tell. <laughs> yes. Sorry, uh, just wondering whether Unicode is Turing complete yet. I, uh, no, I, th I think lessons have been learnt. And, uh, and, and it's not that. Um, yeah, so, and, and once again, if you, if you tried that in another browser, um, then you would be disappointed. But at least it falls back to something readable, um, better than the skin tone variant on the earlier slide. Um, and I think that's all I have. Right. Yes. So what? What? One thing that Twitter do is if you use their system for selecting emoji then they end up putting an image in so everyone sees the same thing. If you don't use their system and you just paste in the character having used a tool like this, then their system doesn't replace it with the image. So it looks kind of crappy. Only one. <laughs> Actually, I'll turn that off. And get real characters. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the advantage of the, of the fonts handling the ligatures if you copy and paste you get the individual characters whereas in the old desktop publishing software days you'd paste in your text and it would 
replace FI with the ligature for FI, and, and then from that point on, if you copied text out, it was corrupted, shall we say. There is, and the fact that I don't include that allows me to make it come up as quickly as it does. But in the properties on, on the right, the very first one is a link to a different website that has all of that stuff. And they've got an API so that I can get the information from them in JSON format well, via an AJAX call so I could display it in a pop-up except there's a bug in their API and the, all the characters, when it, when it gives you, for this character, when it gives you the uppercase equivalent or the, there's, there's a number of variations, they're all wrong, which is quite distracting. Um, and so they, they told me, oh, yes, thank you for picking that up. We'll get right on to fixing that. Um, it's been some years. But when they do, I've got the code ready to go. But you can click the link and go to their site. Yeah. Yeah, so, so for example, if you had an internationalized domain name, say a Chinese domain, <coughs> then you could type it in in, in, in that script. But if there was an, an, a, a Latin character in there, then that, that wouldn't work anymore, and the browser would block that. So it's, it's kind of the same thing. But not the H. No, no, no. That's okay. Well, PayPal is on. Like, yeah. Totally, totally that's not okay. Yeah. Um, but basically, uh, there is the discussion boils down to um, Latin characters are okay, and characters that are only characters that are okay. So, for example, if you're speaking in Russian, Russian is going to have place in the text, but if you have a mixture, or if it's Which should alarm most people. Oh, is, yeah. is Even if you are, you know that that's what you're getting. Yeah. Especially if you get the emoji URL. If you are in an emoji locale. Think of emoji of like the young cat. The question in my mind is with the why did you create the hyphen in the tool? That's a good question. Why not? So I was interested in exploring the, the characters that were available. Um, I was also I, I w was also interested in um, push extending the limits of, of my JavaScript coding. So that's all it's all JavaScript except the enormous XML file gets turned into a relatively small text file by a Perl script, so that 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 file gets uploaded by the browser and pulled apart by JavaScript. So. But yeah, I mean, it was it was just a fun project to have a look at what's there and explore and learn. There are a number of tools, and, and within that tool, there's a help button that pops up a thing with some links to some other tools. One in particular, you can it gives you a, a block. A square, and you can draw a character in there, and it will find ones that look like that, which is pretty darn cool. Yeah. 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 There are there there are blocks, but 
yeah, it's it's not it's not a, a science really, more of an art. Yeah, it's just like it's just it's one of one of the reasons, one yeah, reasons. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't actually keep stats on what people are searching using that tool because it's all, all client side. Although you can link to a particular character if you want to share a character with someone, there's a little link thing. Um, but the, one of the th things I ha historically have seen is, is Google um, search phrases that people have typed in that have ended up there. And the, by far and away, the thing that people are most looking for is a play button. I don't know why, but, <laughs> but there's a little triangle, there's a number of triangle shapes in there that you could use. So um, I didn't mention it, but there is a, a strip of commonly searched for characters on, on that um, opening screen. So the play button is now on there. Yeah. Okay, I think we'd better wrap it up. Um, by all means, keep... Keep networking and chatting.